report to UPMC, to Dr. Samuel Brett, Dr. Clayton Wiley, and Dr. Ron Hamilton. But you see me starting before you this evening, I don't want you to look at Bennett or Malo as of today. I want you to look at me as of yesterday, like the pictures you see. You see Bennett when he was seven years old wearing a tie. And then Bennett when he was 46 years old wearing a tie. <laughs> and tonight I'll share with you the story in between. To understand how something, <laughs> I was sneaking into West Virginia University to the basement in the top room. Dr. Julian Bells would open the door for me late in the evening when there was nobody. So I could sneak in, do my thing, and sneak out. And that was Chris Benoit's break. My poor wife, she had just married me. And yet you could see I was wearing a tie. She took these pictures to document what a weird man she had married. <laughs> <laughs> so that if she decided to divorce me, all she could do was present this picture to her family. And to my own family. So the best contribution I could make to enhance myself and mankind is to be myself, just like each and every one of us here. If I were to deny myself, me, I'm denying humanity, me. So I came to America. I came to Seattle, October 24, 1994. It's a phenomenon whereby your intelligence, your intuition, your mentality, the cast of your mind, the perceptions of your environment are controlled by society without you even being aware of it. They are controlled by the expectations of society, by the cultures and traditions of society, by the norms and mores of society even without you knowing it. And this could happen to the most intelligent of men and women. <coughs> it happens in universities without you even knowing it. That is the dangerous part of it. And the worst objective evidence is provided to you to disprove your cast of the mind. Guess what? You reject it, you deny it, you diminish it, you chew it up and spit it out. And that is very well known. That is cognitive dissonance. People have said to me, Bennett, if you had grown up in America, there was no way you could have touched my breast at that morning. Because you would have been so much in awe of her. And it is confirmation of the intelligence that explains why even the most intelligent of doctors chose to deny this basic and fundamental principle of neuroscience. That in whatever human activity, whereby your head is exposed to blood force trauma, there is a risk of permanent brain damage. Even Hippocrates described it. The novel we hear is that we were not aware that even with the seemingly innocuous repeated blows with the helmet, without symptoms, that over time the injuries accumulated. Even when it was presented to the establishment, it was rejected. Omalu was labeled dangerous. Omalu was dismissed, ridiculed. I was fired. I lost my job in Pittsburgh. I ran away to California. Even in California, they did not know that there can never be a replica of you. Yes, there will be doubts. There will be questions you don't have answers to. But by faith, it is a symbol of the faith you have in who you are that you embrace, recognize, and accept those questions without answers and keep on striving to express yourself. That is what the faith journey is. And by faith, I guarantee you, you can dream the impossible dream. And by faith, I guarantee you,
guarantee you death. I testify to death. By faith, the impossible will become possible.